Hey everyone, it's Ryab. Um, this is going to be a part four and the final part to my ongoing honor guide. This is not going to be something about sim. This is not going to be something about, you know, how to click properly or, you know, what to build or whatnot. This is more about like a general guide. So if you think you're not going to get much from this, you know, feel free to not watch this video, but this is primarily for people who don't know what to take after finishing honor or maybe understanding why taking on or second could be a really good choice for your game. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of show the two options, right? So if we go into Civ um, and we finish honor, you know, you get a huge honor spike in when you finish because all the camps you're farming now provide science as well. Um, and then additionally, you can build heroic ep epic with 100% um, overflow, which is, as we spoke in previous guides, extremely powerful. But one of the things that really defines honor and why finishing honor is really, really strong is because you get 10% food. Okay, that's not 10% growth, that's 10% food. That means every single one of your cities becomes Aztec. So finishing honor gives you Aztec bonus in every city. So that's clearly incredibly good. But then one of the other things that I think is generally slept on is you can now buy generals with faith starting in industrial era. And Generals are probably one of the hardest scaling civilian units in the game because especially when you're dealing with, you know, coastal players, um, one of the best ways to stop coastal players in the late game is just take all of their tiles, general into their land so far with like five or six generals that they have no tiles around their cap. You bring up bring in units, you steal away their strategics, right? There's really, it's really hard to counterplay that from a coastal perspective. Um, so that, that's one thing that's really good. So let's say you finish honor, it's like around turn 60, you're thinking about what tree you should take. Well, there's two really big options, I would say, and the most common options when you pick honor. Uh, the first one is gonna be piety. And this is what you're generally gonna take uh, most games. This is because piety allows you to give, piety gives you the happiness that you've been missing because honor doesn't really give that much happiness, right? Um, honor gives one happiness per city via garrison policy and it also gives four happiness via heroic epic so it's not that many cities or it's not that much happiness compared to other trees additionally the cities we're taking if we're taking city states only have one lux so it's not like we're going to be getting a ton of happiness based on settles either so piety is an incredible way to supplement happiness problems um, additionally as you can see with buying faith and stuff Piety gives us an, a ton of excess faith, all of which we can use to buy generals later in the game. Okay, so what are some things that we want to do when we take piety? So when we take piety, we're going to be building our shrines and temples. You know, it's likely that prior to opening piety, we only have a shrine in our capital, right? That's extremely likely. And that's totally fine. We can now build shrines and temples. Our religion is going to be late. So what, what kind of things in religion are we going to be looking for? So let's go into um, Civilpedia and just like think about, okay, so if we have barracks hammers, right, um, God of War, this is most commonly what you're going to be taking as a Pantheon for Honor. What, what kind of things do we want in that case? As, as we mentioned before, one of the worst parts about Honor is your happiness problem. So ceremonial burial is probably the most obvious choice. But, you know, let's be realistic. We're going to get probably last religion. Um, it's unlikely that the Liberty player wouldn't have taken this. So w what else is there? Well, church property is a great option. When we go piety second, we're fixing the happiness problems, but we're creating other problems for us, namely gold. Gold is going to be a huge issue later on in the game. Um, we're going to have a lot of excess units, farming camps. Uh, we have a really extensive road system most of the time. And, you know, it, it really becomes this balancing act between building enough happiness buildings and having enough gold generation to support the huge empire we're dealing with. So church property is never really taken, but it actually is very good. It, it's very comparable to Tithe in most games. And if you compare it to Tithe, it takes a while for Tithe to really benefit. Um, you could argue Tithe would be better, but you know Tithe's obviously one of the higher priority ones. So if church property and tithe are gone, world church is obviously very, very strong. Um, and then something like Zakat, you know, if there's not a lot of tradition players, could be good as well. You know, the, the emphasis is on fixing happiness and gold. Those are the two resources we're going to be lacking the most. Okay. Um, 
the other way to really supplement happiness problems is with culture, right? If we can't build any more buildings, and this is a common problem with honor, you build all your zoos, you're still unhappy because you're growing so much. It's a good and bad thing, right? So how, how do you supplement that? You can get culture policies via autocracy, via order, whatever you're taking, where you know maybe you're able to supplement them in a better way. So obviously one of the things I like taking um, is something to supplement both happiness and gold and on a building that I'm going to be building religious center is incredible. Um, it actually, it, it works so well with what you want to do with your game. Um, and it really does kind of make your cities a lot stronger. It gives you back as much gold as you need. And it, it, it is very, very good. One thing that also is commonly taken is something like mosques. If we aren't, most of the time we're going to be going at least piety too, but let's say something like um, houses of worship is gone. This is by far the best reformation you can take on honor. Um, let's say houses of worship is gone. Maybe we are able to take more buildings and we, we have more faith to use. So pag uh, mosques is mosques is really good. Um, pagodas is not typically necessary, but obviously pagodas is just nice to have. So why would you not take pagodas? Um, Something like uh, devout performers could be really strong. I'm, I'm intentionally not talking about stuff like pagodas, stuff like relcom, stuff like guruship, right? These are religions that are always going to be taken first. So it's unlikely that they would even be in contention for what we could have in the first place. Um, liturgical can be extremely strong. Um, if we're going to fill out all of piety, uh, followers of the refined crafts is extremely, extremely good. Um, the problem is it comes on a little late, but you know that works out because our religion's late. So this actually is extremely undervalued in general, but for honor specifically, it can be very good. And you'll probably find that this is available every single game. Um, obviously, it's best with mints and, and gem cutters because those come earlier and sensory makers. But if you have textile mills, if you have grocery grocers, it can still work. Um, it just depends when you get your religion and how fast you're pushing your science. Um, and then finally, for enhanced beliefs, you know, what are we looking for? The best one is Kotel. Kotel is pretty much always going to be gone. Okay, so let's assume Kotel has gone. You know, um, we don't really care about that. Defender is honest, is probably my preferred choice. I think Defender really allows us to be a huge threat that no one wants to attack, which gives us time to scale back up. Um, and to be really unkillable, have a really gr greedy sim, and et cetera. Um, but, you know, anything really works. Trebadors can be fine. Send hammer cargo, hammer caravans. Uh, even Hajj can be good if our cap's really weak. If we're playing commerce, Disciples is a no-brainer. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of options. Re Reformations, as I mentioned, it's pretty much always Houses of Worship on Honor. Um, following that you know you could do anything you could do indulgences doesn't even seem that bad uh swords could be okay it's just a shitload of food right so like there's there's options you have options but primarily you just want houses and a lot of times people aren't going piety second unless they're honor so this is this is something that that's widely available actually liberty actually does piety second as well but anyway okay so that, that's the first option. The second option is, is commerce. If we have a lot of faith generation as is, so we're playing some Civ like Jerusalem or Ethiopia or um, Sioux, right? We don't need intrinsic help from piety to get a fast religion to you know supplement our, our happiness problems. We can instead go something more greedy with commerce, right? If you pair this policy, entrepreneurship, up with... Um, if you pair it up with Machu Picchu... I shit you not, that could be upwards of 100 to 150 gold per turn instantly if you get both those policies. So incredible synergies if you are able to get Machu, but even if you're not, commerce really does help honor with what it lacks, which is a lot of gold problems, and it helps it with scaling extremely hard into the late game. But the problem is we're going to lack pi we're gonna lack the faith we generate from piety. Um, we're going to lack some of the culture. So one of the things on this is you're going to be trying to focus more on culture and your religion. You don't really care as much about the hammers and Sistine is going to be the best wonder in the game for you. So those are two things that I think about. I think I'm going to show you um, one game I played in the tournament. Um, this is on my YouTube channel if you watch the full game, but 
I end up uh, killing Russo here, um, and then I take honor sec uh, take commerce second. Sorry, because I am I'm Ethiopia, and Ethiopia is one of the sieves where I mentioned I'm actually building Forbidor here. Um, it's very late uni timing, but it's going to be completely fine. Um, building Borbador here because I'm I'm commerce, so I don't I don't have as good a faith generation, and this actually helps supplement that. Borbador is a wonder that's not commonly built, um, but can really really help your game. So here we're gonna just skip ahead a little bit, right? I think in this game I got Notre Dame because you know I knew I wanted to do commerce, and I knew that the big problem for me was not gonna be um, was not gonna be hammers or the science pushing or pop it's going to be happiness so prioritizing wonders like that can be super helpful and then if we scale it like go to the end of the game i can kind of show you what it looks like at the end right i'm killing up i'm i'm at war with uh two like the remaining two people right now and then i'm also making around six to seven hundred gold per turn right and i'm able to buy so like this is 800 here right just war does this to you but you kind of see where I'm going. Like you can really scale up extremely hard. You have a ton of pop to work those um, to work those trading post tiles, and needless to say, it can really be one. It's probably the scariest thing in the game. You have an honor player that's autocracy that's full commerce as well. There's very few things that are scarier than that in the late game. So kind of prepping yourself to be in that position in the first place is extremely powerful. Um, that's kind of all I wanted to say about this specific thing. I guess one other thing I'd mention is honor secondary can be very good um, in games where you know the game is not going to go to space. It's not going to go long. So prepping yourself to kill someone as fast and able to being, put yourself in a position to flip the cities as fast as possible is very good. So in this game, I had a really strong tradition game. I knew killing Mega Walk was the way I was going to win. So I went honor knowing he would also go honor, but you know, any benefits really helpful. Additionally, having buildings to overflow such as barracks or armories, is is obviously nothing to scoff at but yeah um that's kind of all i wanted to talk about it's gonna be really short but hopefully this is helpful hopefully this answers any questions that you guys had and hopefully it helps you with your honor games so thanks